Hello and welcome to a new episode. Um, in this episode, we are going to look at uh, the use of pod identities uh, to implement the principle of least privilege on EKS, right? So what is the principle of least privilege? The principle of least privilege states that any entity, be it a pod or whatever, should have only that basic minimal level of access required to do its job. Nothing more, nothing less. Like for example, if uh, there's a pod that needs access to S3, uh, be it just read access, let's say, that pod should not be able to write to S3, nor should be able to access any other service other than S3, right? So similarly, you know, be it any other service like secrets manager, if a particular pod needs access to secrets manager, that's the only thing that should be allowed and nothing else, right? So we have looked in uh, one of the previous episodes, we have seen how you can use IAM roles along with service accounts uh, to implement this principle of least privilege. In this episode, we are going to explore a new feature called pod identities, EKS pod identities that has been newly introduced and how we can implement in a much more simplified fashion the principle of least privilege when it comes to EKS, right? So let's get started. So let's look at the use case here. So we have an EKS cluster. Now, this cluster has a worker node and uh, there are two pods uh, that are currently running on this uh, particular worker node. Uh, pod A, the requirement is that the pod A should be able to just do read only uh, to S3. So, and pod B should be able to both do a read as well as write uh, from S3. Now, with this basic requirement, how do we actually enable EKS pod identities, right? So, the first thing that needs to happen is that the EKS pod identity agent needs to be installed on each one of the worker nodes that's uh, running on the cluster. This can be installed as an add-on and is available uh, for installation from the add-on screen on the EKS cluster or you can install it directly from the ECR repo as well. Uh, then the next step would be to create a role corresponding to this particular function over here that basically just reads from S3, right? So we need to create an IAM role that basically is able to read from S3. Similarly, we need to create a role for uh, that is going to be associated to pod B uh, that can both read and write from S3, right? So these are kind of the things that uh, initially you need to do. And then also uh, there is a trust tab on these roles that needs to have the EKS pod uh, as the trusted principle. So we'll look at that later when we, when we visit the code. So the next step would be to basically install service agents or, or sorry, service accounts on each one of the pods. So you need to create two service accounts, one service account for pod A and a different service account for pod B. Now, what needs to happen next is for this pod agent, a uh, pod identity agent to know which particular pod requires what kind of tokens. So there is an association that needs to be made. There is a command line, uh, uh, which we'll look at later, which will ensure that this pod identity agent knows about what kind of tokens need to be loaded on each one of these pods so that the pods are able to do just about what they need to do. So that association needs to be created. The next step is to create that association. So here, this association between this uh, uh, pod identity agent, uh, which basically associates uh, the service account with this particular role will ensure that this pod identity agent knows that pod A needs uh, a token that kind of, you know, just does read only that will let pod A just do read only uh, uh, on uh, against, um, you know, S3. So similarly, you do the same thing for uh, the other service account as well. So uh, you do the association for this service account as well. And that's all that needs to be done for uh, this to work. Um, 
and uh, we can look at uh, the code and we'll look at a live demo right now but uh, if there are any questions or comments that you have uh, please feel free to post them in the comment section okay so let's uh, look at the cluster um, so here let's first look at uh, the add-ons that was uh, installed for the pod agent so you look at this uh, eks pod identity agent that needs to be kind of installed as an add-on so you can just uh, click on get add-ons and uh, you can choose uh, i've already installed this but if you wanted to kind of do this uh, then you just need to go here and uh, you know, pick uh, the add-on and uh, then ju just go ahead and follow the steps to install it. So it will just take a few minutes to get installed. So once the agent is up and running, I uh, just want to verify uh, uh, in the nodes that the agent uh, um, is up and running. So you can just uh, issue a kubectl uh, against, uh, the <clears throat> against the cluster to see if... Uh, oh, one second. Okay, so as you can see, you see the pod agents are running on, I have two nodes uh, at the moment, so it's uh, running on each one of the nodes, so get nodes, so just let's uh, look at that as well. So I have two nodes and each one of these nodes has uh, the pod identity agent uh, that's running on that, right? So uh, the next step uh, as, uh, we, um, as we saw was to create uh, the IAM roles uh, that are required uh, to kind of, you know, uh, for role A, for, for the pod A and pod B. So let's look at first uh, the pods. Uh, so, so these are the two pods, pod A and pod B. So pod A is uh, the one that we are going to use for the read only from S3. And then pod B is, is for um, the read write scenario uh, with S3, right? Then uh, let's look at the role. Uh, <clears throat> so let's go back and see where the role is. And among the roles, I just uh, say PD here. Okay, so I created two roles. So one for the full access to uh, uh, S3 and the other role is for the read-only access to S3. Now here, as you can see, the policy is attached, full access. But this is the part here that's different. In the sense that here you need to specify the service principle uh, to be pod eks uh, aws.com. So this is uh, what needs to be done. So uh, you can uh, then go back to both the roles. So let me look at the other one as well. So this we saw the read only. Oh, so we saw the other one, right? Okay. So this is the read only access and the similar to that. Uh, it needs the trust relationship. Okay. So after that, you need uh, the two service accounts. So let's uh, look at uh, those service account. So the PD are the ones that uh, uh, we are looking at. Uh, these are the service accounts that are being used uh, for the e for the you know um, pod identity agent. Uh, the other two service accounts that you used were for the other video that I made uh, about the OIDC. Uh, provider okay so you can ignore that but we'll look at uh, these two so there's one for role a and one associate with the role b so just let me just describe that uh, for a second so let's see what this has so as you can see, this is, has nothing. It's just a plain namespace and the name of the account, and that's about it. So the key here is how do you make the association, right? So um, between the service account and the roles that we just saw previously, right? So for that, this is what you need to do. Like you see this command over here, create pod identity association, provide the name of the cluster, the role uh, ARN, and the namespace namespace and the service account. So I've already finished that. So when that's done, kind of you'll see this output something like that. 
so now we can go ahead and test it to see you know if we are do we are able to do a read only from uh, pod a and we are able to do both the read and write from pod b so let me execute into the pod so uh, uh, the pod a and pod b are just basically docker images uh, that uh, uh, that have a aws cli baked into them so uh, these are basically pretty kind of simple you can just uh, create uh, a docker file and uh, you know uh, uh, launch those so uh, we'll just uh, execute into one of the uh, you know um, uh, pods uh, uh, both the pods actually and uh, test out some aws uh, uh, cli commands so let's me let me get into one of the pods so i'll get into pod a first So let's do this uh, AWS S3 LS. So I just try to list all uh, the you know uh, buckets so I'm able to read that. So let's see if I'm able to create something. So I try to just create a name of a bucket. So let's try and see if I can create a bucket. So this bucket name is my awesome bucket uh, 0515 create bucket configuration and uh, location constraint us west one region so uh, if we did everything right this should fail so which is good it failed now let's uh, exit this and uh, then let's go into pod uh, b and try to do the same thing so we got into pod b now I will try to do a list. If I list it, you'll see that uh, I can read all these three files. And let's see if I can create this bucket here. So let's do this. Boom. So it worked. So let's look at uh, S3. So you can see that the my awesome bucket is uh, listed here and uh, that shows that we are able to write uh, as well now we can go ahead and delete uh, uh, this bucket uh, just to make sure we are able to delete as well so i just go ahead and delete uh, this bucket okay it uh, seems to have worked okay so you see that that bucket is no longer there my awesome bucket is no longer visible in the list of buckets so i hope uh, you liked this uh, uh, video and found it uh, informative uh, if so please uh, like and share uh, uh, it along with your um, you know along with the friends so please do let me know if you have any questions in the comment section